Now then you two, welcome to another video. A video in which we will try and fix the MR2. Ow. Put the DC2 a bit more together. I don't want to have a big gaping hole. And strip the coilovers down on this and see if we can find a problem. I've never seen this before. So where are we going to start? I don't think we should start on this. We'll, we'll leave that for now. I think we'll start by stripping the coilovers down. I haven't got any, I thought I had some nice alloy grease for the coilover threads and I haven't got any. And rather than put it back together without grease and everything with the right stuff, because you know I'm all about the right stuff these days, rather than doing that, I'm going to strip them down still, see if we can find where this broken bush is. A few of you gave me some ideas, thanks. Uh, I think a few of you weren't fully understanding what the problem is, but to be fair, I don't fully understand what the problem was either, so appreciate anyone just, just offering any kind of insight, you know, it's, it's all good. What, what a brilliant community fan base. Fan base, that's the wrong word. What a brilliant viewership I've got giving me their thoughts and opinions. And it does help because, you know, when we're talking about things, you know, we're, we're talking together and when you talk things through, you know, it expands your own understanding as well, even if it's not the same issue, right? So it's all good and hopefully me doing these videos will expand a bit of your knowledge on things and, you know, help you think a bit more about things. So I think we should start, we'll work our way around, yeah? One, two, three. This is the most concerning one for sure. I'm racing in four weeks time, so we need to either find out where that rattle's coming from or decide that we're going to put the spare engine in, which will need gaskets and stuff ordering to, to get it ready. But yeah, we'll start on the M3 coilovers. We'll work our way around to putting the DC2 a bit more back together. On the DC2 front, quickly, Torque GT and Hybrid Racing have both kind of said they don't want to give me any excuse not to have this car back together. So that's uh, really kind of motivational to hear from, from such big companies like those two to know they want to support our little journey with this fucking sack of shite, rusty nail. Nah, just kidding. Right, let's get started then. E46 coilovers. Right, before we get too carried away, I've just taken some measurements of these coilovers. Just from the bottom to where I can feel the threads start to start for this body. And then I've taken one of this kind of recess section, top to bottom, for the first cup to the bottom cup, but inclusive of this um, flat part at the bottom, whatever you want to call it. So this way I can get the coilovers something like what they were. The M3 definitely deserves a corner balance. We'll have to do that. Oh well, once we fix this knocking noise, you know, I want to give it a corner balance. So this will just help me get it something like we can tell how far the threaded section is into the bottom body, and then we can tell roughly how much preload's on by doing that measurement there. And that will help me roughly get it back together when we assemble them again. But let's start the tear down. I'm not sure this is gonna work with my, the body of me getting in the way of the shock bodies. Do I have a matching pair of gloves? Nah. Might go for the special, special surgeon gloves. These drop links, I'm gonna take them off, but I'm so tempted to leave them on because they're a bit of sods. On the BCs, because you've got this section where the drop link attaches to it's it's real difficult to get on there with anything um, and I don't think these are the problem I mean, obviously they've got a bit of corrosion on them but the ball joints in there no problemos now someone someone did actually comment saying if you're running standard ball joints uh, sorry if you're running standard drop links which I, I am these are E36 M3 sized but someone commented saying if you're running them they could be causing this twanging noise that I'm having which sounds very peculiar to me because, you know, obviously these are ball joint, ball joint, and then just a bit of steel in between. I don't understand how, I, I don't understand how that could be a thing, but I know a lot of you know better than me. So if you know what that chat was on about, then let us know. Okay, so for now then I am gonna leave this on there. Now, how are we going to get these off? So the springs, a bloody tight in there, you know. Starting to corrode a bit at the top. Starting to corrode a bit at the bottom as well, but no, no breakages that I can see. 
I wonder if it'd be worth getting them powder coated while they're off. Maybe these are just loose. So I'm trying to unscrew the adjuster and the full top mount nut's moving. Now we should really probably take a bit of tension off this spring, but there's not a lot on. It's not like when you're doing a, a shock and a spring. Here's one I made earlier, said the Blue Peter man. It's not like when you're doing one of these, where there's obviously quite a fucking decent amount of tension. Coil over spring, not the same, although, you know, it, it could be the same technically, because it's still a spring, but you don't put that much tension through it, whereas these are very taut. So this gives us a little bit of a problem because we're gonna we're gonna be taking everything off in a wanna. So I need a spanner for the top nut to keep that secure, which is a 17 millimeter. So now I should be able to get this adjuster off. There we go. That's loose now. Oh no, I'm I'm talking absolute shite there. So it's actually rotating the full um, the shaft. What are we calling this? The damper. Uh, piston? No, not piston, what we call it? You know, the shaft down the middle, that's what's rotating, not the fucking nut. How foolish of me to think that we had such an easy out. So, I guess now we'll truly find out just how much tension's in this. Now, ideally we'd be in the vice right now, but I'm gonna try and send it. Oh, that is tight. All right, it's got it a little bit. The spring still feels pretty taut though. So the Ugga Dugga did the business and there's no tension in that now, so I can just wah, 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 wah. Take the nut off. Top mount. I mean, it doesn't feel terrible, but there's quite a lot of dirt around here. Can you see all the dirt? It's definitely dirty. The bearing doesn't feel terrible though. Not the pillow ball, because obviously this is the one that's loose in the hips. I don't feel bad either. So, who's loose? I mean, that could be tighter, but not loose. It feels a lot stiffer now it's separated, strangely. Work that one out. Ooh, now that's interesting. The spring. The spring's almost like see solid to the bottom. I've never seen this before. Spring. Well, these are really not in that bad condition. I actually bought these second hand um, not long after having the M3, so they're probably at least five years old. Is there any construction date on there? Well, maybe that might mean something in the old factory back in the, uh, it's not, not the People's Republic, the other one. Should be able to clean this up nice, I think. So let's compare this against the right-hand side one. So the right-hand side one's the one that's stiff, right? Oh, <laughs> okay. Can you hear that? This bearing's gone, definitely. Trust me, the feel is a lot different. This one feels terrible. So I think what we should do is get a pair of these before we put the coil overs back together. Because one of them, that one's good. This one feels horrible. I mean, it's freeing up a little bit to be honest, but yeah, you can definitely, you can feel when a bearing's gone and it's fortunately it's not something that they've invented on YouTube yet to allow you to feel things. I'm sure, I'm sure in the future we'll be able to feel. Uh, this one's exactly the same as well where the, the spring, the spring is stuck. Yeah, so that the spring again was was stuck, so the theory here, chaps, if you're not following entirely, is the twanging noise could have been from these springs either not being allowed to rotate, which have we found that the bottom was pretty stuck, and then twanging back into shape when they, when they you know, transition to the other side of the car when the weight moves, or the same theory, but could be coming from one of these top mount bearings not allowing 
the rotation. Um, because these are McPherson struts, so the entire shock body turns with the steering of the car, unlike the Integra or the, or the MR2 is a McPherson as well, so that all happens there. But yeah, the DC2 stands alone with that because, you know, double wishbone front suspension. The stuff of gods, and unfortunately the MR2 nor the M3 doth feature this. How's this damper feel? Oh yeah. I mean, obviously my arms aren't a dyno damper, but a damper dyno, sorry. But they, uh, they feel pretty good. I'm impressed with that because obviously, as you saw, they looked pretty knackered on the outside, but the coilovers themselves don't seem too bad at all. So I think that's, we shouldn't really go too much further, I don't think. I'll wait until I've got some new bearings and some proper alloy aluminium grease and we'll put these back together and hopefully have no more problems. Maybe we'll try and get these powder coated as well. Eight kilo springs, 160. They do actually have some covers on here, but as you can see, they've, these spring covers are just, just probably holding water, if anything. They're well rusty underneath. I mean, they seem in good condition, but they're just a bit rusty. All right, well, that's enough anyway for part one. Let's move on to the Integra. Hopefully the camera angle hasn't been too shabby on that. It's been pretty static, hasn't it? All right then, chaps, on with Le Integra, the Pierre Le de Resistance, or something like that, if you're French. What we need to do, take the inlet manifold off. It's not held on with any bolts. The bolts are there. So we'll change this. I've robbed your socket again, Matt. Thanks for that. I needed a deep 24. So I've got a new knock sensor there. I have it on good authority by the tuning wizard himself that we don't need a knock sensor. But we'll put it on anyway. And uh, yeah, so that goes underneath this inlet manifold, which is... Did I put any bolts in? Oh, I did put one bolt in. So we'll take the inlet manifold off anyway, get this knock sensor changed. Then we need to affix the fuel rail properly because it's not bolted in. Put the new gasket on. Have a look at the water pipes probably first as well. Make sure the water pipes are all sorted. Yeah, we need to put the cooling hoses on first, don't we, before the inlet manifold off. So first job, inlet manifold off, and then we'll do the cooling system, the knock sensor, and then inlet manifold back on, fuel rail on, and then we can start looking at the fuel system, see what we're missing. I wonder how many foot pounds for the old knocky sensor. Stone cold engine hasn't been around for ages. Is this gonna, is this gonna come out nice, or is it gonna do a tailor and pull the threads? <sighs> Was there any? Was there any, oh, was there ever any doubt? Now this would have been an absolute pain in the ass to change in the car. That's what broke. Look, it's just uh, actually pulled out. That's near good. So new one, eBay finest. I reckon that's probably about 20 foot pounds going off the gun count. Knock sensor completios. So now we should have in this lovely package from Torque GT, we should have some lovely K24 cooling hoses. Got a new style, new age, taking us into the next decade with hybrid racing and new graphics. Obviously all my stuff that's on this car was from 2017 hybrid days. This is the this is the new we go racing now, by the way. Hybrid racing days. So then, are these just gonna go straight on, I wonder? All right, well that's that one. That looks like it fits pretty well. That's the upper hose. Oh yeah, quite a difference. I mean, yeah, I mean there's quite a difference on the K20 versus the K24 anyway, as I will just compare for myself on this one. In fact, because I'm top vlogger in that and I've got two cameras. Two cameras, Dan, that's crazy. Four nans, Jeremy. So this is a K21. So we've got a straight outlet here from the radiator, curves round, and then it goes in on the engine at a 90. If we compare that to the K24, we're coming straight out at the top again, but we're not going in at a 90. We've got more of a 
you know, maybe a 45 or a 40 degree angle there, yeah? Or a 60, whichever way you want to look at it. Definitely not 90. So that's why the hose felt a bit dodgy to start with. And this is a lower one. And again, this is different because thermostat housing pointing up on a K24. So this is a K20A. As you can see, the thermostat where the, where the red hose is going on. Can I, uh, can I get a focus point, please, mate? There you go. So you can see how that's pointing down. So that's why my hoses were less than ideal. So that's K20 and back to the K24. She's pointing in the air. She's going north. So let's see if this hose is any better. Well, this is becoming another case of I can make it fit, but I don't think I should. So the top hose is definitely better, but I'm still struggling with the bottom one. So this is the K24 hose. I'm guessing this 90 here is for going on the snout end of the thermostat, which it does all right. And then this kind of sort of lines up at the bottom, but where that where the line to cut isn't, it's a bit too far in. So it's another one where we can kind of make it fit, but do we want to do that? If we compare that to the old hose, so this is the old hose. So this is meant to be for a K20. That, if anything, fits better. How, how does a man explain such a thing? Hmm, I mean, I've still not got my rear engine mount welded up, so maybe we're just not seeing things so clear because the engine's not rotated at the right position. Hmm. Well, I ended up taking the thermostat back off because I noticed that with this in the car, when I was putting the hose on, I could rotate it just a couple of millimeters either way, just like that, which uh, was <laughs> very concerning. And um, yeah, the bolts were all tight and all good. And this is a, it's a Cosworth, a Cosworth, a Cosé, 70 degree thermostat, but it's in an OEM housing. So uh, yeah, I mean, the, the housing and everything's all good. Yeah, I'm not, not quite sure why that feels so AIDS. But um, yeah, I'm just cleaning the bolts up in the vise and then I'll put it back together and I'm trying to find a torque setting for these 10 mil bolts because they're going to a, a plastic housing with some little brass kind of uh, fittings for the threads. And I was trying to find a, a torque setting but I can't find a torque setting anywhere. So I'm going to start at 20 newton meters and see how it feels then, see if I can still get a little bit of rotation. Because it's very disconcerting. <laughs> when your thermostat housing has a little bit of rotata. Well, that seemed to do the trick. So <laughs> I didn't get up to 20 newton meters, don't worry if you were getting concerned. Um, I got the other torque wrench out because <laughs> I was going up to 20, I was like, this feels like it's getting pretty tight. But now free the bolts that are 15 newton meters and I've got no more play in that. I can't, I'm not gonna try and force rotating it. I'm using the same kind of force I was doing before and it's not moving. So thanks to Josh for the tip. He recommended cleaning the shank of the bolts did that, put them all back together and yeah, no more rotating thermostat housing, so phew. Just a little update then, because I've got quite a lot done so far. Injector looms on, got all that looking tidy-ish. Inlet manifolds now bolted down properly with a new gasket. Fuel rail bolted down too. Done a little bit of tidying up on the wiring, it's looking good. Fuel system, I started looking at this fuel filter to the fuel pressure regulator area here and I've already mounted it somewhat but as you can see maybe the hose between them is maybe a bit too long so to negate that I might move the filter over a little bit but I need to get some more M6 rivnuts so I can't touch any of that just today. Uh, the radiator feels pretty good where it is. Found another foot for the bottom of it as well. Uh, this was when it had a, I think it had an EP3 radiator on it before so the, the radiator cap was uh, yeah, it needed some, needed some breathing room just on there. Uh, but you might notice the bumper's off. And that's because I've got an oil cooler, which I used to always run an oil cooler on the DC2 until I crashed at the ring and I, I wiped it out. And ever, ever since then, I, I never put one back on it because, well, I didn't even have an oil temperature gauge then. I just thought, fuck it, don't care. Um, it was a bit overkill really for the driving I was doing, although I did see high oil temperatures when I was at the ring. So I could never do two laps of the ring kind of like I could in the M3 where we did like three laps even sometimes in the M3. 
Well, the Integra, you do one lap of the ring, and when I had the oil temperature gauge, it would get right up to, say, 120 degrees sometimes to the oil, so way too high. But I've got an oil cooler this time because, you know, we might be doing some racing, and some of these racing events, you know, some of them go on for two hours, if not longer than that. So, what an oil cooler. It's actually a smaller oil cooler than what I had before, but it should do the job just fine. So, I've just been looking at where I'm going to mount this. I think I'm just going to go on the kind of headlight support beam, this... This black, bit slightly rusty bar here. I think I'm just going to mount it because it's come with this little bracket. It's come with this little alloy bracket where, which um, I can use to mount it. Oh, don't fall. Uh, so I think I'm just going to mount it on there upside down. I've just taken the lines off now to try and figure out what I'm going to do. Last time I ran it up and round the back of the engine mount because the oil filter is just on this side of the engine. So I think that's what I'm going to do. And um, yeah, I'll get this mounted and then I'm going to call time on the Integra because we've had a couple of hours on it now and you know, we've got quite a lot done, but we definitely need to have somewhat of an inspection on this today. So give me half an hour, to maybe another hour on this to just to get this sorted and then we'll go MR2, see if we can figure out where this noise is coming from. Well, I'm getting somewhere with this, but unfortunately I've hit a little bit of a roadblock. So I got this mounted up reasonably nice could do with being a bit over to the right hand side but it is adjustable on that bracket I guess so I might just try and slacken off the bolts and slide it across now I had some rubber hardware I don't know if that's the right term for it but when she focuses when she focuses when she focuses when she focuses there we go right so as you'll see we've got radiator here a bracket for the radiator here, bolt, bit of rubber, and then the bit on the end is actually a rubber, uh, I guess you call it a rivnel really. Uh, it's squashed up a bit there now and then I put a nylock nut on the end of it. So something using M6, I was going to use M8 originally but then I remembered I had all this rubber stuff in, in M6. This is what they look like. And then they get squashed up. And the idea is, because the engine and the frame vibrates and twists and stuff, uh, you don't want that going through your radiator because it can damage the core. So the same as where the, the radiator is on rubber feet, you know, you want to mount the oil cooler radiator the same. So you can flex it a little bit, just like you can flex a radiator a little bit. I mean, it needs to not be completely static, but I'm hoping that's a good solution. But yeah, the lines, this left hand line is just a bit too close to the body really. Um, I might actually take it off and maybe shave off this part of the frame maybe. Um, but yeah, I mean, I fit a bit of a, a bigger problem so I thought I'd try and get this end on and then I can work out where the line wants to go. Because at the minute really the line's looking a bit long but I mean we can try and root it, you know, try and get rid of some length. So second line of the day, that's too long, but yeah, I've had a problem getting this. So this nut, right, this nut should not be in my hand right now. So the oil filter, real tight, and I was fucking trying to get it off my wrist all the time. I put this oil filter on, it's brand new, the engine's never been run, right? So I put this oil filter on and I'm going to take it off and fucking hell is it stiff. But not to worry, I thought, because I, back in the day, I bought a genuine Honda oil filter removal tool and um, yeah it's fucking sheared it's fucked so I can't actually get it off the oil filter but yeah she's on the fucking oil filter it has this nut on the back and it's just fucking sheared off man so this is for some reason ridiculously tight oil filter maybe I wait to run the engine and get some heat through it or something but I can't get the fucking thing off and and like I say, I'm not too happy with how close this is. So I might slacken it off and see if I can move it down a little bit. But yeah, that's how it's going. So it was going pretty well, but then this fucking thing sheared off of the bastard. Well, this thing has never, ever failed to get an oil filter off. This is the backup. I managed to find it. This used to be owned by my grandparents. They used to use it to open jars and stuff, but... I guess they've not opened any jars for a while because I've had this for quite a long time now. Uh, but yeah, guess what? It failed. Can't get it off. So the oil filter's like cold welded itself on there or something. 
Um, of course we know the solution, we know how to get it off, we can find the biggest and baddest screwdriver and put it through the side of the cunt and fucking, you know, we, we can get it off for sure, but um, I don't have another oil filter to put on and I don't want to, I don't want to have a big gaping hole. So what I'm going to do is park for now, maybe order an oil filter or something, uh, have a wee bit of a, of a tidy up, because, you know, I've, uh, you know, I still need to put my trailer away, man. Like, <laughs> uh, so yeah, let's, let's let's tidy up for a bit. Park this for now. I'll get an oil filter orders. Um, there are some other things, obviously, that I need to get as well, such as a belt, um, throttle body, EP3 throttle body. Still haven't got one of those. An adapter plate. Haven't got one of those. Um, this fuel line, I definitely have it somewhere, but I can't find it. So that's on the list. My uh, clutch line don't look too healthy, does it? Hmm. But yeah, I mean, fuck. <laughs> Fucking oil filler has uh, put a bit of a stopper on our progress there, but got some decent progress in. So enough for DC2 then. Let me get some tidying up stuns. And then we'll uh, try and figure out why this fucking thing's chirping. So she fucking chirping like. Right, we're up to the third job of the day. The Anyone who was a, a frog enthusiast will, uh, yeah, this is the bit that you've been waiting for. So let's start it up first. Have another listen to this sound. See if it's still chirping. Of course it's still chirping. And like I said at the start of the video, there's two things that we're going to inspect today. One of them, very easy, exhaust manifold. Uh, the exhaust manifold gasket is new, the studs are new, we're talking six months old at best. Um, and then we've got the VVTI solenoid, has a little filter on it. And that is a pain in the ass to get to, and it might end up just being an engine out job. So we're, <laughs> we're hoping it's going to be the exhaust manifold gasket. But that doesn't quite explain why I was down on power, does it? Now that's the... That's the sticking point, because I was down on power. Well, I say that, we might have always been down on power, because the only races that I've done since thinking I was up on power were both in the wet. So, you know, we had our first dry race mm -hmm. since the first dry race, which was terrible, and we uh, didn't have any straight line cap. Oh, well, we had some straight line, obviously. We weren't absolute babber. Hopefully this is a nice, simple one. Well, well, well. So the exhaust manifold gasket's definitely leaking a little bit. So that's a good start. But that sounds horrible, doesn't it? Obviously it's been sat for a about a week now without getting started, so maybe terminal. Hmm. But it's leaking on the left side on, was that cylinder four is it I think? Or cylinder one, whichever one. I don't know, I don't care. But let me try and nip that up if it'll go any. We might be on with an easy win here, that'd be lovely. Although we should probably let it heat up a little bit before we try and crank on this. Oh, we can just YOLO it. Might just YOLO it. Oh, what the fuck? 13 millimeter bolt on a Japanese car. Who thought that was a good idea? Oh wow, yeah okay, that's loose. <laughs> <coughs> Give you a better view, Captain. Actually, I've got two cameras, I'm a professional YouTuber. What am I doing? All right, so the exhaust manifold was leaking from this side and I've just gone and put a Wrench on that, and it's loose. Yep. Hello. Oh yeah, it's got tight. <laughs> I was gonna say that it's, oh no it is. Yeah, feels bad. Feels like it's pulled itself out of the, <laughs> feels like it's pulled the threads out. Can you imagine a Toyota engine doing that ever? No, I can't either. We'll let it warm up a bit and then we'll attack it. It should sound better already though. Right, so I've had a look online and apparently these should be 27 foot-pounds of torques. Hey Siri, what's 27 foot-pounds in newton meters? 27 foot-pounds in newton 
67 foot-pounds force is equivalent to about 36.6 newton meters. Because it was starting to feel a bit dodgy, that to be honest. So let's just make sure it's where it wants to be. It's definitely not at 36. Not yet anyway. Now I did say that, um, what did I say? I said that this wouldn't explain the power loss. Now I do understand that there would be some power loss associated to it. So, you know, we can be hopeful. To be honest, none of these are at the torque setting. But they all feel a bit cruddy, to be honest. To be honest, to be honest, to be honest. I need an extension. This uh, stud and nut kit was off eBay. It wasn't cheap, cheap. It was reasonably cheap, it wasn't cheap, cheap. But it has not lasted. It's rusty as fuck already. And I dare say, this is gonna tell me to fuck off soon. I don't mean, obviously I love a helicoil, so that's fine. Let's see if it nips up. Sure isn't having a good time. Let's try this one. Exhaust is still hot, so... Ideal. Okay, we got the 36 newton meters out of that one. Hey, we got it. We did it, Reddit. Not this one. Yep. God, these feel so bad going in here. Okay. All right, just one left. It's gonna be a bitch to get on. No burning hands, please. Who the fuck am I gonna get on that? Let's try a different torque wrench. Because I am a man of multiple torque wrenches these days. Ow! Exhaust hot. Ow! So, what's the lesson, kids? If you've got tar wrenches, use them. First time round. There we go. So, all these are at 36 now, Newton meters. Let's see if, um, let's see what she sounds like. I can feel something at the top here. I can feel something. Maybe the exhaust. Because it's been running without the gasket pushed up tight, maybe it's killed the gasket, but it seems all right. Thank fuck it worked that VVTI solenoid. Phew. Well, that's a very nice end to the day for me. Don't have to pull the engine out yet. And uh, yeah, nice easy fix. A few people did say exhaust manifold gasket, so kudos. You get some Scott Mills points. <laughs> I need to think of some, I need my own points. What could I name them? Hmm. No, no, I can't start giving people points. Although I think if, if I did the YouTube um, be a member thing, I think I can actually give people things for, but maybe in the future, guys, that's, uh, that's no time soon. Maybe, I don't know. I see a lot of people doing that. Uh, just step by step, yeah, we've done the Patreon, we've done the Teespring. Thanks once again to everyone on Patreon. We've got like 50 people now, just here, done off some money every month. Although I ain't got any money yet from it, but first of the month, it's fucking payday, bitches. <laughs> um, right, so this is good. So the MR2, I can book a dyno day now. I've got a standard airbox to test against my air filter setup, and I've got a JDM ECU to test as well. We'll see what the differences are and we'll hopefully get a bit more straight line. Of course, a leaking exhaust manifold gasket can lose you a bit of power, but it might, to be fair, in a racing situation, it might be enough just to, um, just to give me that a bit less performance than everyone else, I guess. But I wouldn't have thought it had been that drastic, but I guess we'll find out. I'm thinking my homebrew uh, intake manifold, uh, my homebrew intake is probably going to be the, the thing that well, I'm, I'm hedging my bets that put in a standard airbox so I'll give it some more power. That's what I'm hoping for. But I want to do it on a dyno. I don't want to do it just, uh, you know, testing it. And I don't want to use the arse dyno. I want to use a proper, a proper dyno and see what she puts out. Right, that just about wraps us up then. M3, need some bits, bearings for the coilovers, and my nice special fancy grease. 
Should arrive tomorrow. Integra, been foiled by an oil filter. And obviously there's a few other bits going on, but we've made good progress on the Integra today. And the MR2 had the easiest fix of the day. The exhaust manifold was loose, which was making that horrible noise. And yeah, the bolts didn't feel real good. The studs going into the block, I thought it was gonna strip, but seems all right now. So we'll just hopefully never have to touch that again. Thanks once again to the uh, Patreon subscribers or whatever you call them, patrons. Sounds like you're going to a pub lab, doesn't it? But yeah, thanks to the patrons and everyone who's bought a t-shirt. Designs, hopefully we'll have some designs coming up in the next week or so. Who knows? If you've seen my Instagram, you'll see I put a little teaser on. So yeah, I got a DC2 design, Boston Green E36 design and something of the MR2 as well. Right, that's all from today then. So if you've enjoyed watching, bit of everything for everyone. It's time for me to go. Fresh from the warehouse.